Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you've been watching recently, you will have seen me develop part of a large HO scale model railroad, the Masabi and Western, for a customer. As I have alluded to before, the whole thing has to be dismantled so that it can be transported to Minnesota for installation in the customer's basement. And of course, before I even cut one stick of wood, I had to design the structure in such a way that everything could be dismantled and then reassembled without damage. So now let's head out into the workshop, dismantle it and pack it up into a trailer for delivery. Before I can make any visible progress, there are a lot of preliminaries to take care of. I have to disconnect all the bus wires and slide back all the, all the rail joiners at the section joints. And it's important that I don't miss one because that could result in damaging track where it's very difficult to replace it. And also I've got about a million screws to back out. Once I've done that, I can now slide out the first half of the top helix and I carefully set it on its back while I add some protective wood blocks at the ends so as to protect the rail ends. And now I can just stand up without fear of damage and go back to removing screws on the other half of the top helix. I have to use the extension tip for this because some of the screws were at the wrong angle to reach otherwise. Now I can get those two parts set aside out of the way and there are a few intermediate pieces that don't have any track on them that were just used as supports for the top helix and those can come off next. Now I'm working on the other side of the helix at the, on the back where the Y is. There goes the bridge and the Y tail that you can't actually see if it's just off the picture to the right more screws to undo and now I'm removing the top bridge now unfortunately I managed to rip a couple of rail ends on the top level and that's what I'm now photographing so I can assess the damage and figure out the best way of fixing it when I install it now I've just got rid of the start of the middle deck and the temporary supports for it and I'm now working on the end of the lower helix which as you can see is an oval section. And once again, I'm adding scraps of plywood to protect the rail ends. I repeat the process on the other half of this end. Although in this case, the splice plates between the sections already protrude beyond the extremity of the rails and therefore protect the ends. And now I just have the four main base sections to, to take care of. And I had a little bit of a think here because the far end of the lower helix was quite a heavy section. It was only on two legs and the other end resting on the section next to it. And I had to find a way of being able to take that off next without breaking it. So I built up stacks of boxes and scraps of wood to make some temporary legs underneath it so I could just slide it away. And then once I got it lowered on the ground, it was fairly safe and I could just stand it up. Now that section already has plywood extending beyond the end because that's the section that I chose to put these splice plates on. And then when it came to dismantling the next piece, I had a little bit of a problem, one of the bolts was tight in there, I had to get a hammer to remove it. Now I'm getting rid of the section next to it, adding temporary legs so I can stand it on its back. Because as you can see, there is a section of roadbed that protrudes beyond the edge of the frame. The last piece was a piece of cake to stand it up, get rid of the legs. And now I'm stacking everything in the corner. You may have noticed that I swept that corner of the workshop earlier prior to stacking the pieces there. And now I'm just cleaning up the rest of the workshop, get rid of all the sawdust, 
which was difficult to get rid of with so many legs in the way. The first thing that happened when the customer arrived to collect the railroad was we managed to get the trailer stuck in the dip of the driveway. You can see it here with all four wheels off the ground. Fortunately, I had a scrap 2x8 and a pile of bricks and we were able to build a lever, lift the trailer just about an inch off the ground and get a sheet of plywood under it to use as a skid. So after that, he went out, turned around and backed in and we had no more trouble. You can see us here loading the trailer and as you can see, it's a lot bigger than it needs to be for this railroad. So there's no need to play Tetris and fill every space. Instead, all we had to do was make sure that everything was secure where it couldn't rock or fall over and get damaged. So we just built it along both sides with bracing between the pieces just to hold everything firmly. And then I just had to make one more lap of the workshop just to make sure that nothing had been left behind. Then just close up the back door and he was off. And the plan was then to follow him up after a few days and get the thing installed in his basement. Well, that's all for this week. As I mentioned right at the end of the narrative, the plan was for me to follow a few days later and install it for him. Unfortunately, those plans had to be put back because of my wife's health. And as you are no doubt aware, she passed away recently and I had to delay still further until I could get all her affairs sorted out. But I have rescheduled the trip and I'll be up there in January to install it. Of course, when I left the UP, after 14 winters up there, I really didn't want to see snow again. So I really wanted to be back there in January. Well, anyway, that's all for this week. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching and bye for now.